Hi, welcome to Friday Live. We're back with the whole gang. Uh, I'm Cara, I'm with Steven, Ben, Jack. Uh, we are all in town this week, so figure That like never happens. Why the hell not? Yeah, here we are. So we're gonna do a round table discussion today. Um, we've kind of been collecting all the questions that you guys have asked at the end of each episode and kind of pulled them together to kind of talk about them while we're all here. Mm -hmm. And, um, but don't forget, <laughs> we also will still answer questions at the end of the episode, so leave those where you are. So should we kick off? Oh, uh, one thing before we start, I'd like to apologize to you all, although it, it's called a round table, it's at, we're actually sitting at a rectangular table, so we're sorry for that. Two rectangular two, two tables two. positioned kind of like linearly here. Yes, so yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of the opposite of a round table. It is. Yeah. It's a square table. Yeah, we're off to a good start. We're yeah. really yeah. We're, It's it. going to be a good one, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, <laughs> but the rules are you only have three minutes. Okay. Uh, we have three minutes has for a question. So I have six questions, three minutes to answer, and when we get to the end, I'm going to ding the bell and no more talking. Okay, can I give one of like one of my minutes to Jack so he can have four minutes and I can have two? No. No, it's three it's minutes total. It's a collective total. three minutes. Oh, collective okay. three minutes. Yeah, it's okay. three yeah. we talked about this. If it was three minutes each, we'd be here all day. Okay, fair. Yeah. 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 It'd be like a four hour thing. Yeah. Yeah. Can I buy an additional minute? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> I got 20 minutes. <laughs> Absolutely not. I'll take a thousand. No. Anyways. Okay, moving on. <clears throat> first question, what was the first watch that you saw that left an impact on you? Not necessarily owned or bought yeah. or had, but like you saw it visually and you're like, damn. Jack. Oh, uh, well, gosh, the first watch that I can remember really noticing, uh, I think I was about three or four years old, and uh, I was in bed with the flu, mm -hmm. and my dad came in to say goodnight to me, and he had, uh, it was, you know, a, a decent mid-range watch at the time. He had a Benris watch with a radium dial. And it was uh, just glowing like a bandit, and I saw this uh, you know, thing glowing on his wrist. And I immediately forgot that I was sick. And I thought to myself, someday I'm going to have me one of them. And now I have several. You should accomplish. You should accomplish. Life goal met. <laughs> you can go home now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll do it. Ben? Uh, yeah, so I guess the, the watch that, that really stuck out to me first was my grandfather's uh, Rolex uh, Day Date. You know, I mean, how can you miss it? Uh, so this is the same grandfather that eventually gave me an Omega, which kind of led to, to all this in some ways. Uh, so I was probably 11 or 12, um, and we were down at his house in Florida, because that's what you do uh, when you're a Jewish man from Long Island. You buy a house in Florida in the 80s, you know? And we're uh, at it. Exactly, you were at it. Uh, and so I saw this thing, and I was like, Jesus Christ, like, what is that thing? Uh, and he handed it to me and put it in my hand, and I was like, <coughs> whoa, this is, this is an impressive thing, whatever this is. Uh, and at that point, I realized <coughs> that watches were cool. Uh, before that, I saw some digital watches that my, that my father used to wear and things like that, and I owned several as well. Yep. But that yellow gold day date, which is now with my father, uh, is definitely a, a you know, standout moment for sure. Yeah, it's a good watch. Steven? Yeah, uh, the first watch that stand, stood out to me wasn't a mechanical watch, but it's a really classic design. Uh, I had a high school teacher who had a mundane Swiss railway watch. Oh, yeah. uh, and I just remember seeing it, and I had never really paid attention to watches before. And I remember seeing it and being like, oh my god, this is such a striking thing. Uh, and I got to talking to him about it and ended up actually getting one for my high school graduation, which I wore all through college and until I bought my first vintage watch. So it was the watch that I wore up until really, you know, after I was a Houdinki reader, and then kind of got obsessed with this whole thing. You still have it? Uh, I do, I do. Cool. And I wear it occasionally on the weekends, not too often, but I have it, I keep a battery in it, yeah. Sweet. Love it. I feel like it's really fitting. Yeah. It's, I feel like everyone's choices yeah. are really fitting for them. Yeah. I love that. It's nice too, because like when I go to Switzerland and like I see the clocks everywhere, it's mm -hmm. this nice little like, you know, reminder. it feels like it's a nice little reminder of how I got into all of this. Yeah. Um, mine was the Cartier Tank, and I remember seeing an advertisement, and I was like, that's the one. And then I ended up getting that for graduation as well. So anyway, yeah. that oh, was mine. Right. Uh, I was like 16 okay. when it happened. And, and it was it, a stainless steel with a bracelet. And it's kind of full circle because contrary to belief, you actually bought the Jackie O tank, right? Yes. Yeah, it wasn't Kim. <laughs> it was not Kim. I actually called Kim after and I was like, girl, give me that watch. And I <laughs> like, bought okay. it from her. Uh, yeah, it's car mine. <laughs> so now it's sitting in a safe somewhere. Yeah. So anyways. Are you going to tell us where? Undisclosed yeah. location. No, I'm not going to tell you where. It's actually right there. No, it's, it's right over there. I can yeah. see it right now. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. So that's kind of that. Anything else to add? Yeah, I was uh, going to add, uh, you know, quite a long digression about uh, me, you know, seeing a radiation hazard while ill at age three, but we're out of time. Right. Sorry. Oh. Perfect timing. Oh. Okay. Next <laughs> question. What do you think about the trend of vintage-inspired modern watches? We saw a lot at Basel World this year, with you know, Fotina, as I like to call it, and 
faux patina, just in case you guys didn't catch that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Folks are explaining. Sorry, did you Thanks not get explaining. it? Okay, yeah. yeah. So that's, so yeah, what did you think about the trend? Go. Steven, you go first. <sighs> Honestly, it doesn't bother me. Uh, I think it can be overdone, um, the faux patina stuff, but in a lot of watches, I actually like a creamier color versus a bright white. I think the bright mm -hmm. white can sometimes be a little overwhelming. Uh, and this just makes everything a little more subtle. Uh, what I will say uh, kind of bothers me a little bit is the idea that like all the good ideas in watches are in the past. Mm. Uh, yeah. I think if, you know, if watchmakers <laughs> stop looking forward and stop trying to like do new things, like what the hell are we going to do in like 20 years? You know, like uh, we will have remade everything. Are we going to do like remakes of remakes? I don't yeah. Although to be fair, it's kind of hard to come up with something really new at this point in the history of watchmaking that doesn't look like you're just striving for effect through novelty. Well, I think things just got so crazy a few, like 10 years ago, and now it's kind of like, they're just like bringing it back. Like, just bring, make things more simple. Yeah. More, you know, the, what's the word I'm looking for? More attractive to more people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You hate faux patina, though, right? I don't like it. I think it's too yellow. Does I want it to be just like a little less. It's the color that you don't like? Yeah. Not the faux Not the faux Well, maybe, maybe it's the faux Maybe I just don't like something posing to be something that it's not. Yep. Yep. What about you, Ben? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I hate, <laughs> yeah, I hate the whole thing. You hate the whole thing. I hate the whole thing, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I think, you know, if you, say say Rolex stopped making the Submariner in 1963 yeah. and then came out with the ceramic Submariner today, people would say, oh, that's a throwback, that's a vintage, whatever. It, it's mm. not. I mean, like, the Submariner's been around forever. It's just restraint in design. Uh, so I think in, in many ways, a lot of this vintage stuff is really just like thinking about design in a much more kind of like uh, programmatic and like conscious way. Um, and thinking about stuff that was popular in the past makes sense. Uh, you know, again, to Stephen's point, I think, you know, we don't want to focus too much on the past. Yeah. Uh, and I think like the watch that Jack is wearing is a wonderful example of something like genuinely new from a, from a great brand. Um, so, I mean, of course, I love the vintage stuff. I think that's pretty obvious. Um, but, you know, it, it can go a little, little bit too far. A little too far. I think yeah. you just have to come up with a fresh interpretation. Like, you can be inspired by the past, but you also have to make it look new yeah. and yeah. I mean, contemporary. I think, it's, I think it's a question of not, of not taking it too far and not doing it too much. I mean, right. you know, when you see a watch with, uh, you know, a sort of pre-yellowed uh, loom, it's a little too, um, you know, yield mechanical wristwatch for me. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 not. A, I don't think it's a bad, a good or a bad thing in and of itself. I think it really depends on how well it's done. Right. But, but what do you think about like the Omega Trilogy, <laughs> where like they took watches and they literally laser scanned the cases so that they could make direct replicas of these watches? That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you heard it here first. That it was, was it was fun. fun. It was it was, yeah. was adequate. It was a good time. Um, yeah, you know. Whatever, like, you know, th those are wonderful watches on the wrist, so I, I like them. Um, but, you know, again, if you have one of those original watches, it's a little, little, little But you know, the thing I liked about those was the, you know, the, I mean, laser scanning the original cases, they were so obsessive about exactly Agreed. duplicating those yeah, watches. Yeah, yeah. That, th I mean, the fact that they were so crazy. Uh, the bell means we're, we're done. We're done. We're okay. done. Next one, let's do it. Next one, okay. <clears throat> uh, something we get a lot every week, and we haven't actually done wrist shots in the past, past couple episodes is what are you wearing on your wrist today? Start with Ben. Start with me. So I'm wearing the Black Bay uh, Steel and Gold. So I'm really into gold these days. Uh, I feel like it's good for summer, honestly. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, I'm a fan of everything. The, exactly. Uh, I'm a fan of the Black Bay. I have one of the original ones with the Edder movements and the, and the burgundy bezel. Uh, and this one just kind of jumped out at me uh, on this kind of NATO style strap. Uh, it's pretty fun. It's just like a neat summer watch. It's got a date, uh, which I didn't even, to be honest with you, really know until I bought it. <laughs> all right. um, it's good to know you're reading all the stuff we're writing too. Uh, but it's cool. I mean, it's a fun kind of knock around uh, watch. It's, it's, it's that, kind I, of, I wrote that, it's that kind of narrowly <laughs> obsessive focusing on every detail that has really made Hodinkee what it is. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I, I think you know these tutors, they're waterproof. They come with the, the NATO strap. They're, they're great yeah. for summer. The straps are killer. The, the straps, straps are killer. Are one um, of the best ones I have to say, there. I think the two-tone looks fantastic on a It's sweet. It's something different you know it's yeah. just a fun yeah. thing i've got enough steel watches i've got enough gold watches this is a little bit of both yeah, yeah. yeah. Two tones. on the bracelet two just tones. for me it's like you know a tone too far but uh, <laughs> yeah how many tones is the appropriate amount of tones yeah. two, two tones is more than one tone correct when are you going to get to three <sighs> working on <it>. okay <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm still a young guy. I'm just 34 still years time. old. I've got yeah, some time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still have time okay. to commit. You have a lot of time for the third time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, you? Uh, I am wearing a vintage GMT, a reference 1675. Uh, this was the first like major watch purchase I ever made. Um, I was really unsure about it when I bought it. Uh, 
And I love it. I absolutely, absolutely love it. Um, I'm really more of like a time only or time and date watch kind of person in general. I like you know, really clean, pure, classic designs. Um, but I love travel watches as well. And obviously, I travel a lot for Hodinkee and for myself. Uh, and it's, you know, it's a complication I actually use. Like, I, I have owned chronographs, and I always end up selling them because I never use them. Uh, I use this all the time, every time I travel. Or if, like, a family member is traveling or a friend is somewhere, like, I'll set the bezel just as, you know, kind you know, of it's funny, I mean, the chronograph versus dive watches story that we just yeah. ran yesterday, somebody actually said in the comments basically the same thing. I've, I've owned many chronographs, but the only thing, I, 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 I've never actually used them for timing anything. Yeah, I just don't use them. And, like, I get it. I get why people like them. Yeah. It's just yeah. not my thing. See, I, I wear chronographs almost every day. In fact, I would say 9 out of 10 watches I own are, are chronographs. Yeah. Uh, I time stuff all the time. Yeah, yeah. Nothing important, ever. But I time stuff. Yeah, you were timing something weird the other day. That's what I do. Yeah. That's all I got going on. It's just time and stuff. You're wearing time a Rolex too, right? Yeah, I'm wearing my Day Date uh, White Gold 1968 1803. Mm -hmm. I just love it because it looks really good and it's really pretty. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Well, I just think the I think the white gold. I like the white gold uh -huh. <laughs> because it looks like stainless steel, but it's not. Uh -huh, right. So if you don't know what a Day Date is, you're like, oh, she's just wearing a steel Rolex. In fact, I am not. Uh -huh. It's white gold. And I think this particular one, I don't know what it is. I think the dial looks better than any other white gold dial I've ever seen. Mm. It has a nice luster right, to right. it. I think I have about 10 seconds. Uh, oh. So uh, I'm wearing uh, the Bulgari Octo Finissimo Ultra Thin in titanium on the bracelet. It is currently the world's uh, thinnest self-winding movement. Uh, and uh, Keep going, keep going. Oh, hit me, hit me. Yeah. But it's such a cool watch. I want you to keep talking no, it's a, about it's, it. It's, this is one of my favorite cool releases this year. Yeah, so just to, just to go over a little bit. Uh, we'll, <laughs> we knew we'll, it was going to happen. There was no way this <laughs> was, was going to work. Wait, then you don't have a chronograph. Just, <laughs> uh, it's it's just, uh, just, just over 5 millimeters thick overall. The movement is 2.23 millimeters thick. The price on, the, on a bracelet is $13,900. Uh, brand new from Bulgari this year. Extremely comfortable to wear. Uh, highly recommended. And self-winding. And self-winding, yes. And you can get your signature engraved on the band. You can. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Fun fact. Um, okay, what constitutes a dress watch today? I feel like Jack has very strong <laughs> opinions about this. I feel like the strongest actually, opinions anyone on the planet has so, about this. So, uh, uh, stri strictly speaking, there are, there are two uh, dress codes. Uh, there is a semi-formal, which is a tuxedo, which is what most people think formal means. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is true formal, uh, which is a, a tailcoat. Um, and uh, for true formal, a watch typically is not worn. It is uh, generally not considered correct to even wear an extra thin pocket watch. It's just, it is not done. Because you're not supposed to thing. check the time at the Indeed, event. indeed. It reflects yeah. poorly on the host and shows disrespect for the elevating nature of the event that exactly. one is attending. Now, for formal, or for semi formal wear, when you're wearing a tuxedo, it is permissible to wear a watch. Uh, it is said by uh, many respected authorities that the watch should be time only, it should be extra thin, and it preferably in a white metal. Um, uh, gold is yellow gold or rose gold is not considered appropriate for dress. Two hands, uh, no seconds hand because, uh, you know, why would you be counting the seconds at, uh, at a delightful, delightful event? Yeah. Uh, and obviously no date, no complications. Time for that bell? No. I think Still. it should be time for that bell. Are we done? <laughs> oh, that's the deal. I mean, you know, the whole... No, the whole but I think there's something like today, there's so many things have changed with, I mean, I am a traditionalist yeah. as well, so I fully agree with what you're saying. However, I think there's been a lot of changes with like dress codes and like when you can wear white pants and when you can wear a white dinner jacket when, and like all this stuff. When can you wear white pants? Always. You can, all year round now. You can always that's wear white the new, pants. That's, that's new? the new rule. Says However, new. it used to be between Easter and Labor Day. Yeah, yeah. I, th I thought it was between Memorial Day and Labor Day. Oh, I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. in the South, it's between Easter and Labor Day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's hotter makes, down there. That makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but I think you could, I mean, can you get away with a steel two-hand watch? Absolutely not. That's ridiculous. Come on. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You, no, you no, can no. wear. Yeah, you can wear a steel too. So I mean, a steel look, Alta the, the is unacceptable the reality, with a tuxedo. One hundred percent. All right. No, the real. I mean, the reality is that you can do whatever you want, and almost no one will object, as we see every right. time there is actually a men's dress code at a formal event, and it's in the papers. Correct. Remember the papers. Um, <laughs> but to me, part of the no. <laughs> sure. <laughs> to me, part of the pleasure of having a code is irrational adherence to its most minute details. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, fair. the fun kind of gets drained out of it. Mm -hmm. That's totally fair. When you see, if you see people in semi-formal wear wearing a, what do you think when you see like a chronograph with a tuxedo? Oh, that person is, they're dead to me. They're dead to you. Yes, I cut, I cut them. Yeah. This is coming from the guy who wears a t-shirt at times to semi-formal events that we host. 
I'm, uh, <laughs> That's happened before. Right? Shot, shots I'm, uh, fired. It's black at least. <laughs> I'm, I'm unaware of any such uh, operation. Or I think there's proof on the website. Nor would I I'm be sure disposed to discuss image. such an operation if in yeah. fact it had occurred. Do we pull assets for that? Do we have yeah. assets pulled? Um, I gotta be me, man. That's fair. It is kind of because it does have to go under the shirt. Yes. Yeah. I think it should. As be someone like, who doesn't wear a tuxedo, no, but it should be thin and probably time only. We've but never like, done an event actually where there was a declared semi-formal code. That would I'm you aware. kick someone out of our, our, an event that was semi-formal? What about no? That's semi-formal true. event, long of one, big date. Is that okay? Ooh. That's fine. In platinum? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, just went fine. back on everything you said. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> done. <laughs> okay. Next question. And I'm going to answer this one first. I think Stephen should go. No, I think I'll answer it first. If you are given three thousand dollars to buy one watch to wear forever, what is it? There's only is one answer, and the it's answer a is Dave a Johnson's Johnson. sixteen oh one. Oh boy. All right. So whose answer is that? Uh, it's my answer. Mine called dibs. Mine. All right. It's Kara's answer. I'm stealing Kara's answer. But I'm going right to make. I'm going to make one change. I'm going to say if you can only have one watch, you buy a vintage Datejust, but you get it serviced by Rolex and make it waterproof. But they can't touch the Ooh. dial. Yeah, but you like okay, so maybe you have so, like, so you have an authorized like, oh. you have an authorized service center to do it where you know somebody, and they're not going to mess with the dial. So but you if you can swing. only wear one watch, you get a DJ and you get it waterproofed. Okay, congratulations, you one up to me. Good job. Thank you. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> <laughs> we're done here. Right? That's it. We're done. Here. No, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Go ahead. Uh, Jack, you want to go? No, no, you. Okay. Uh, so I would say honestly, I probably would have gone with a, a day just as well. But another reasonable answer would be a Universal Genève Compacts, which are the snapback ah. olive uh, button pusher chronographs. Uh, those you can still find for around two or $3,000. They're small, you know, they're 35 millimeters, uh, but they have an in-house movement or a Martel made movement. Uh, you know, get one with a radium dial so it looks kind of like military-ish. Um, and it's really a beautiful period chronograph uh, that has some technical merit uh, mm -hmm. and is still, I think, uh, a wonderful watch that at that size, you can really dress up, dress down. Yep. Maybe not wear to a formal event, but a semi-formal event. Probably get away with it. Semi-semi-formal. Semi -formal. Semi -formal. Um, so, you know, it's just a great everyday watch. And again, they can still be had for around 3000 bucks. Yeah, yeah. That's a great answer. Uh, I mean, there's so many possibilities, right? Uh, 300 Seiko 5s, um, 100 G-Shocks, um, <laughs> That's which is actually kind of tempting. I think you should do it. Yeah, yeah. Just I give might. everyone Do, do they know have that many colors, though? I'm sh I mean, yes. of both of those, uh, um, both of those watches. I think probably you can find. Yeah, so you would wear a different color if you every day. Three hundred different uh, Seiko fives. Would you wear your G-Shock with your tuxedo? Yes. Jack, you're just going back on. I'd spray paint it white gold. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Flake, flake white gold. To be like weirdly nostalgic for a time that was not that long ago, I wish we could still answer UG tri compacts. Which would have been like five years ago. That would have been a viable answer. Yeah, yeah. less. You know. Three years ago, that would have been a viable answer. My real answer in modern watches is actually a quartz watch. It's a, a Grand Seiko, uh, Grand Seiko quartz with a 9F quartz caliber. Because yeah. I figure if you're only going to have one of something, you want uh, the best of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's arguably, and I know somebody's, probably quite a few people are composing irritable rebuttals right now out there. You know who you are. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> However, um, it is uh, argu arguably uh, the finest uh, quartz watch um, produced uh, with uh, expectations for longevity that you don't usually see in a quartz watch, yeah. and uh, I love them. I would also say almost anything with a 7750. That's controversial, but it's like, yeah. that's a great yeah. effing movement. It yeah. is a great movement, and in fact, you know, you don't hear that much about it anymore. People don't, people don't talk about, uh, you know, how terrific it is from sort of an engineering standpoint, but it's yeah. been inside so many groundbreaking watches. Yeah. yeah. Maybe an IWC pilot swatch for the 7750 from yeah. a few years ago. Yeah, yeah, you get yeah. a day, you get a day, yeah. you get a crown. That's fantastic. That's a fantastic choice. Good looking watch. Yeah. yeah. So there's lots of good options. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. People forget you don't have to spend a ton of money. Yeah. And we're done. Last question. And Bella's starting to Until we move on to your question. Yes. Oh, right. Don't forget, put your questions in the comment section on the article that we posted, because we'll get to those as well. Um, final question. What do you look forward to seeing in the industry later this year? Or in the next, I guess we'll say the next year. By which we mean, what do we, what do we hope to see? Yes, yeah. what do you hope to see? Through the end of the year. Yeah. Through the end of the year. Through the end of 2017. Or up until SAJ. Do you want to go? Uh, sure. Yeah, uh, the big one for me is the Cartier tank. Uh, this is obviously the 100th anniversary of the tank. Um, obviously, that watch makes a big impact, <laughs> or we wouldn't have Cara here with us today. Um, but it's a huge anniversary. I mean, that's arguably the most iconic watch of all time, if not the most, one of the most. Um, mm -hmm. And we were kind of promised at SIHH, we expected to see all these anniversary pieces, and we didn't. And we were promised that they'd be coming later this year. 
uh, and we're yet to see what that means. So it's it's a huge anniversary. I would expect mm -hmm. something good, but I'm really hoping for something you know something really crazy, and then also something just super wearable and classic. Yeah. Stephen, are you hoping for an advertising campaign from Cartier with the tagline "Everybody, let's get tanked"? <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> Yes. Jack Forrest room. Jack Forrest room. <laughs> Here all week. <laughs> this is what we do with the day in and day out. Every day, yeah. Uh, how about you, Ben? Uh, no, oh. you go, Ben. Uh, <laughs> After that, I'm done. I would say just like a lot more Hoding Be Live. Just tons and tons of Hoding yeah. Be Live every yeah. week from now until the rest of time. But the implication there is that we're part of the industry. Well, in some ways. I mean, it's watches. Paul Newman, True. Paul Newman. I'm yeah. Oh, it's, oh yeah. yes. I'm I forgot about, about that. Yeah, that. Forgot That's going to be that. crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you haven't seen the watch yet, right? Nope. Yeah. haven't. I think I'm just looking forward to, I mean, what I'm hoping for uh, is a fairly slow um, recovery of uh, retail in, uh, uh, in, in fine watchmaking because I think the fact that um, there was a contraction has actually been in some ways good for the industry. I think it's um, produced a little bit more focus. And I think that it's uh, produced. I think it's produced better designs and more affordable watches that really offer something of value to consumers. You know, there's there are more watches in the first half of the year uh, that I've seen that I think um, are not going to become a source of regret for the people who bought them. Yeah. Uh, especially at the prices that they were being offered at, and just like more of that, I think would be fantastic. I would also like to add something to my answer. I want to see what George does with Breitling. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm really excited about yeah. that. Because the likelihood of him coming out with a product this year that he had his fingerprints on it is low, but there's going to yeah. be something from George. And I, would, yeah. I, I truly don't know what it is, but I would imagine by fall we'll have some idea of if it's going to be a celebrity campaigns or the product line or something. Yeah. Um, so I think yeah. he, could, yeah, he could revive it. I'm excited yeah. to see. So it'll be interesting, interesting at the gonna, very least. Yeah. 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 Then you think he's going to want to put out something with his fingerprints on it fairly quickly? I mean, wouldn't you? Yeah, 100%. Especially if I were Mr. Yeah. Kern. Right. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm interested in both the things you talked about, the Cartier tank, I think it'll be awesome. Can't wait to see it. I wonder if they'll do a ladies one. I don't know. We'll see. Paul Newman, <laughs> also excited about that. And I'm just excited to see what other new watches come out this year. I feel like we've had some really great hits so far, and I think there'll be some good ones coming up. Yeah. I want to add to Ben. So the Paul Newman, Paul Newman is obviously like the star of auction season, but I want to see what happens with the fall auctions. We've had so many like yeah. huge high dollar record setting pieces, and not just the bow dies and such of the world, but like even you know basic yeah. Daytonas and basic big crowns and like all kinds of stuff. Uh, I want to see what happens. I want to see if this continues to go crazy or if there's some plateauing or even a dip. I mean, if you talk to vintage dealers, they'll tell you it could be, you know, things could keep going nuts or at any moment it could just like fall out. I agree. But I had that to was after the bell. I had to ring the bell. Cheater. Sorry. <laughs> Um, okay, cool. So should we move on to questions? Yes. Let's... No bell for this. Why not? I don't know. Well, now cool. we can do it. All right, we got a lot this week. All right, what do we got to you? Um, Sorry, I had to. All right, let's... Uh, <laughs> one question is, what do we think about the new watches that Patek released for the Grand Exhibition? Kind of in hindsight, now that we've had a little time to sit with them. Ben. I mean, I think the World Time Minute Repeater was uh, one of the very few genuinely exciting innovations in watchmaking of the last, I don't know, 10, ten years at least. Um, the Grandmaster Chime had a lot of really interesting stuff going on with it mechanically as well, but you know, a, um, a World Timer that is uh, capable of chiming the time correctly for whatever time zone you happen to set it to. I mean, that's just, the, it's, it's, it's uh, in, I think it's in what, we, what you could call inherently interesting watchmaking. Nobody's ever done it before. It's technically yeah. rather difficult to do. And it was something really new done well. Yeah, and, and on that <laughs> note, I mean, that, that was clearly the stand-up piece, not, not surprisingly. Yeah. Uh, and with the Clausen enamel dial, which is actually a beautiful uh, piece of, uh, of dial work there. Uh, yeah. Some Clausen pieces, even from Patek and, and others recently, haven't really been to my taste, but I thought these were, were really I well done. I agree. In particular, the, the night uh, yeah. scene. Uh, that was a wonderful watch, and I have to say that when, when I mentioned that some that Patek was doing that to a large Patek collector, he said, "Oh, that'll be eight hundred fifty thousand, and it in fact was not. It was five hundred fifty thousand, which you know is still a just still a lot of bananas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's a remarkable amount of bananas, bananas. <laughs> the most bananas. Uh, but it could have been more bananas. Um, so it's so, a relative yeah. steal. I mean, you know, to some. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I do know for a fact that people are vying to get those ten pieces. Like they're, yeah. they're dying for it. Yeah. Uh, and they have not been allocated, as far as I know. Because so you want five of each. Right? Five of each. You still have a chance, by the way. So your team yeah. night though. I'm a night dial guy. I like the night dial. I'm night dial. Yeah. I thought the night dial was gorgeous. Yeah. All right. 
Not so that Night Dial, New York, the city that never sleeps. What about what about the pilot? The pilot, I think, was the one that like was arguably bigger news, even though it's less yeah. technically interesting. Yeah. But I think they're all. But I mean, as I mean, everyone was going crazy about them. It's like a, they're an entry level piece now. Yep. So. Yeah. It, it, as far as I know, I mean, it's it's the least expensive kind of watch that's not a fifty one nineteen or yeah. Yeah. something yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, in in steel, um, you know, it's it's perfect for what they're trying to do. They're trying to get new people into the into the family. At the same time, of course, they've heard complaints that if you are, in fact, a new person that wants to buy that watch, uh, right. the likelihood of you getting it is, is, is pretty slim. Um, but still, I, I think it's yeah. right for, for the consumer that, that Patek is trying to appeal to, and that is a younger North American buyer. Uh, you know, all these watches are obviously are, are being sold uh, in the United States. Uh, as far as I know, again, they haven't even been allocated, so yeah. I don't believe there are any on the market right now. Um, it's a hot watch. You know, I mean, this is Patek, it's 20,000 bucks. Person, ben, do you yeah. think some of the upset is it's a watch that seems to invite you in with one hand and push you out with the other? I, I think that's exactly it. And, and that is, that is Patek, you know. Um, they, they want new consumers, but they want to have the final say in who those new consumers are. Yeah. Um, which, you know, is, is a frustrating proposition to too many. Um, but is the watch technically interesting? Not at all. Uh, is it handsome? Debatable. Right, uh, right. But that said, I know many, many people that are just clamoring to get this thing, and that includes major Patek collectors and guys that have never bought a Patek ever. Um, yep. So, you know, mission accomplished on their part also. Yeah, it's totally. for sure. Yeah. Cool. They took the bell away from me, so. Yeah, you don't get the bell. <laughs> You're back. You're over there. Um, all right, what, uh, what brand do we think is the most underappreciated brand in watchmaking? Hmm. Modern watchmaking. I have an answer. Go for it. I'm going to say Grand Seiko. Yeah. Uh, I think there's definitely people out there who do appreciate it, and there's a cult following, and it's, you know, it's definitely not a total sleeper, yeah. uh, but I think people don't fully appreciate to what high level, like, to the, the really extreme high level those watches are created. You know, it's, it's really to the, you know, in-house in making of the hands and the polishing techniques to the movement finishing. It's really, it's really top-notch watchmaking yeah. up there with any of the, the great Swiss watchmakers. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's something cool about it being Japanese. It's definitely yeah. different and has like a different vibe. Uh, and the prices are great. I mean, the fact that you can get a really nice mechanical Grand Seiko for around $4,000 is like, yeah. that is an awesome watch for $4,000. It is. Carl, what do you got? I'm going to agree with Steven on that one. Sorry. <laughs> We're like the same Kill person. Me today. What? Kill me today. You guys like sit together or something? Yeah, we yeah. sit together. Yeah. We do. Okay. We yeah. I'm going to make you move it. off my desk. It's oh. what? It's our desk. Anyways, yeah, I agree. I really love the steel time only one they came out with this year. I thought that was a really nice watch, and yeah. I agree. I think the Japanese factor is super cool. They're really well made, and they look great. I mean, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm gonna go with Omega. Really? Yeah, I think Omega doesn't get enough uh, enough credit around here. Mm -hmm. You know, had they just kind of had they been a little bit more purposeful with their design and a little bit more kind of like dialed back with how many models they did across yeah. their families, yeah. I think they they would be Rolex in, in many ways. You know, uh, and we've got the Metis cer uh, certification. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got an anti magnetic, a master chronometer. Like they, they do a lot of stuff for their basic you know everyday watch. Um, right. That is really only matched by Rolex, and maybe not even matched by Rolex. In some cases, it's just that they're they're not Rolex. Um, I, mean, I think Omega makes a hell of a watch. I, I'm inclined to agree with you, actually, and I think that's a I think that's a great insight. You know, the um, what Omega is doing technically at a really affordable price point. You right. know, within the completely irrational context of quote unquote luxury watchmaking, of course. But what they're offering technically, I mean. It's uh, it's hard to think of anything that really you know exceeds it. I think I mean Rolex is doing other things that sure. are in their own way are just as interesting. But you know to be the company that industrialized the coaxial escapement has meta certification. Every single watch they make, including models under five thousand bucks, can withstand a magnetic field of fifteen thousand gauss. Now or greater, which admittedly is a somewhat abstract. It's a lot of gas. You know, it's a lot of gas. Yeah. Many many gas. Yeah. yeah. Um, How many gas, Jack? Fifteen thousand. All gas. the gas. All the gas. <laughs> um, but you know, that's, uh, there, there really isn't anybody else offering that uh, kind of um, technical proficiency yeah. at such right. a great price. And it's from a real brand, like it a is. brand that people yeah, know on the street. I know? mean, the fact that they went to the trouble to, co to industrialize the coaxial escapement is... Uh, it says a lot. It's an almost bizarre situation. Correct. <clears throat> what about you? What do you think? Um, poor, I don't think I have anything really to uh, offer in addition to you know, these two these two brands, I mean, I think that those are really great insights. I think, I agree with you, Stephen. I think Grand Seiko is still, for all that it's become much, much more of a thing, yeah. I think that it's still underappreciated and it's a little bit of a, you know, sort of a, you know, a, it's a situation where people, a lot of people still can't get over the fact that it's a Seiko. Yeah. Right. You know, grand or not, the fact that it's a Seiko seems to disbar it from consideration as a luxury watch. But yeah, I think that there's, uh, I think there's a lot of room 
for growth in people's capacity to appreciate what Seiko is offering. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I think we'll do two more. Uh, the first one is, do we feel that there are any modern watches that will eventually turn into classics? Oh, yeah. I, I think several. Um, <laughs> I think, effectively, any modern Rolex sports watch. Yeah. I think the Patek 5711. Uh, you know, I, I think there, there are many, many watches. I don't, I, again, the definition of classic, who knows what, what this man or woman is, is you know, kind of inferring here. Uh, but I think th these will be sought after watches for, for years to come. Um, I think Lange Ones. Yeah, Lange One comes to mind immediately. Yeah. That, that's a modern classic for sure. I think early datagraphs, you know, Lange yeah. Panex, Rolex. Um, I, I could see some of the, the more interesting Speedmasters becoming collectible. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen it. I mean, the Snoopy went crazy. Yeah, the Snoopy went um, nuts. Yeah. yeah, I think that there's plenty of opportunity for, for modern watches to become classics. I mean, the yeah. bigger question is what do, we, what do we mean by become a classic? Right. You know, I mean, arguably, the longer one is already a classic. Sure. You know, I think it's already there. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. What else we got? That was easier than I expected. Uh, let's take a look here. Uh, any funny questions over there? That's what I'm looking for. I don't think the cool awesome Not guy really. is on the comments. <laughs> He's the best thing. <laughs> uh, Anything dripping with contempt? <laughs> yeah, well, here's, something, here's something that's like a little controversial. It's more about Patek, but uh, what do we think the impact is of Patek prohibiting uh, dealers keeping boxes sealed? I don't know any. Uh, you know, it's a little like insider baseball, but. Yeah, so to, to, to kind of pull that out a little bit. What Steven is referring to is so when you buy a, a watch from Patek, uh, the watches are sealed. Uh, that's no longer allowable, we guess, although that, I haven't heard that directly from Patek. Mm -hmm. um, and so that you can't sell the watch quickly as a sealed brand new watch. Um, and the reason for that is a lot of people, would, if, you, if you have access to some of these watches, say this minute repeater that of which there are only 10, right. you could buy that for 550 and I probably know somebody that would buy it for 750 the next day. And so Patek doesn't like that. And you know, you see a lot of this stuff where you see these unique dials going for 3X, 2X, whatever at auction. This is a, effectively one way to prevent that. Uh, and also like, at least in, in the short term. Um, you know, it, I, don't, I don't hate it. You know, it, it has always bugged me when people buy our watches and flip it for more morning. I think it's a nice thing to, to happen and I think it's a rare thing to happen, so that's great. But you know, we want watches just like I'm sure Patek wants watches to go to people that really care about it. Right. But at the same time, it's like, come on, you buy the watch, like it should be yours. You yeah. Know? Yeah, I don't, it, and it doesn't seem like, I mean, I understand it as a sort of symbolic gesture, but it doesn't really seem like it's going to have much, if any, yeah. effect on the phenomenon of flipping, you know. I mean, just the, you know, the expectation of being able to get a paddock sealed in the box changes because you can't get them from authorized dealers that way anymore, but the, the impetus is still the same. So I, I heard a rumor, and I, this is completely hearsay, and potentially not true at all, but I'll say it anyway, is that a certain brand is now selling very special watches without box and papers, and they'll give the client the watch, and they will not have access to the box and papers for six months. Wow. Meaning that, that that client cannot sell that watch without the box and papers. Or they yeah. could, but it would be at a dramatic decrease in value. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, mm. Which is taking it to like the next step. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. pretty draconian. It yeah, is? That's yeah. That's intense. That's really intense. But at the same time, like yeah. you know, if you're selling stuff to clients, and they're going about flipping it yeah. like that yeah. for yeah. 2x, yeah. it's like, uh, Well, know. there's no client loyalty anymore. It's kind of. Let's hear more about that. The client loyalty? Yeah. You yeah. said there's no client loyalty? Well, like if you buy a watch and you flip it immediately, you clearly you're just trying to run a business. You're not buying the watch to enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, on the other hand, to play devil's advocate, like if you have the money and the access and you want to go buy this thing and flip it and make a profit, like should, should you be able to? I don't know. Yeah, of course. I, of course, you can do whatever you want, but it just doesn't yeah. show your loyalty as a client yeah. to that brand. And it seems I totally... Mean, you do you. And it seems totally day. okay, though. Like it is bad for these brands, it's bad for their own brand equity for that to be happening in a certain way. Uh, so it makes sense they would want to restrict it. I mean, it's a little micromanaging if you ask me, yeah, but I agree. But that's like, that's your thing. You love, both of you love to micromanage. I don't micromanage at all. I am so I love to so micromanage. Super, yeah, I'm not gonna deny this at all. I love to micromanage. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, and speaking of. <laughs> moving <yeah>. on. <laughs> moving on. Um, Awkward. Let me manage this. Uh, you mean micromanage it? <laughs> micromanage it. We have time for one more, right? We have time for one more. Um, let's go. All right. What do we think is more important in a mechanical watch? Its actual timekeeping ability Definitely or its aesthetics? aesthetics. <laughs> the aesthetics. 100%. Done. Jack yeah, is going to disagree with us here <laughs> vehemently. 
Jack might uh, throw that bell at me. A, a, watch, a watch is a time measuring instrument. It can be many, many other things, but it is a time measuring instrument first and foremost. There are many, many instances, in fact, most instances, in which that is not what the owner is primarily interested in. 100%. However, <clears throat> I believe that it is part of the unspoken social contract between watch, watchmaker, and watch owner that an effort should be made to strive for the best reasonable possible accuracy in any given timepiece. Of course, you have different expectations for a Meta-certified official chronometer from Omega than you would have from an ultra-thin dress watch that was made in 1955. However, it is, so to speak, the responsibility of the watch to do its very best. I'd like time. you to draw up a contract. I, I will. I have, I have several <laughs> coming several soon drafts. to a hodinky near you. Anyway, that's my that's my view. I th so I, I think I think um, spiritually speaking, uh, accuracy is important. <laughs> like deep in your bones, you yeah, feel indeed, indeed. Like accuracy. Call is me vain. I'd rather it look good. You want it to work, though. Obviously, yeah. because you tell time on it. But if it's running, you know, a little slow one day, I'm not gonna. I'll go get it fixed. My feeling is like as long as it keeps good enough time that I can actually use it to waiting. tell me what time it is. Yeah. Like, that's fine. So aesthetics. Are we done? Or we do one more. We can do one more. Should we do one more? We have time for one more over there. We have time for one more. Uh, they, okay. say, the they say, "Crusades, Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, wow, that sounded super pompous, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh well. All right. If you had to reduce your own personal watch collection to one watch that you already own right now. Throw everything else out. Uh, what would it be? Oh boy. Or sell it all to Jack. That's like asking. You got to sell your whole collection to Jack. Right. What's the one thing you keep, Jack? You're selling. Ooh, it to that me. feels so personal. Oof. <laughs> feels much more and personal. We're, we're, frame we're, we're that removing way. all like emotional attachments, right? So we're just talking about like an object, because like yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I've got yeah. my grandfather's right, right, right. right. Yeah. To wear. If, you're, to wear. if you were just going to keep one watch and like you didn't have to worry about the emotional impact of the other stuff, yeah. right? So then, what, what, Even what's emotional. the basis of the? It's just like the, the one, one you watch like, in your collection. The one you like to wear the most. Wear it every day. Oh, you mean uh, emotional connection as in sentimental connection? Correct. Yes. Right, 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 right. Because it was hand, you know, handed down yes. by a yeah. parent. So that's not in uh, existence. I can't decide. Yeah, me either. Yeah. Totally good. You give me an answer. Yeah, you guys, come on. Do your job. I, I would probably say 6239 Daytona Rolex, the first one. Little wine, yeah. pump butchers. You can put it on an alligator shop if you had to. Uh, <laughs> if, if you had, you had, to. had to. Like, if you were wearing like, a suit, yeah. like, you could definitely get of away course. with it. But you I can't mean, wear it with a tuxedo. If it was my only watch, I would. Yeah, yeah you'd have yeah. to. I mean, for me, honestly, it's Daytona with a tuxedo is kind of awesome, right? Just gonna say it. I'm not gonna argue. Not with according it. to Jack. I mean, for for me, it would be my uh, Speedmaster. It was the first. Uh, uh, it was it's was the first good watch that I that I got out of graduate school, <clears throat> and it's also a watch that I've been wanting since uh, you know I first saw them in the National Geographic adver advertisements in 1968. It was the astronauts' watch, uh, you know, and uh, I wanted one for years and years and years, and uh, it's it's definitely the one that I would uh, there. You know, there's a lot of watches that I have that I have and have had that I've loved a lot, but uh, I I would never let the Speedmaster go under any circumstances. How about for ten grand right now? Uh, <laughs> I mean, you get cash. <laughs> we can make that happen. <laughs> Should we do that on air? <laughs> ben buys Jack's most cherished watch. A briefcase full of cash. Oh, great. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh, this is hard. <laughs> um, I think I think. The day date. I love my Daytona because I can wear it every day, and it's like new stainless Daytona. steel, the new one. Yeah. And I think it would it would definitely condition wise last a lot longer than the day date because I can already tell my bracelet's stretching out. I'm really sad about it. Mm -hmm. um, Do you want to tell us? You noticed that? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think the day date. It's yeah, just I'd, special. I'd keep this. Yeah. So we've That's got three Rolex, three out of four is Rolex. It's pretty. I lame. mean, it's, lame. it's tough to argue with. Kind of a conservative choice. I though. like Rolex. Yeah. So sue me. Yeah, Rolex is never wrong. That's the thing. <laughs> That's Rolex, the thing. Cartier, yeah. You can't go wrong. Yeah. 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 They're not necessarily the only watches you should They have everything like. you need. They have the design. They have the movement. I was kind changes. of hoping one of you guys would make an impractical but romantic choice. You know, yeah. like, like you'd say something like, well, this Cartier tank, it's completely ridiculous. It's uh, not nearly as durable or reliable. But we removed all emotion well, from our choice. All, I guess. I mean, you know. I mean, all right, we'll, spin, we'll spin the question. <laughs> any one watch. Not doesn't have to be something you want. It's probably time to ring Ding that the bell. bell. Yeah, we're done. It's yeah, over. I think we're done. We're done. Yeah, okay. <laughs> thanks, everyone. thanks, everyone, for joining us this week. It was really fun. And we'll see you next week on Friday, I believe. Did Jack get the bell next week? No. The bell is mine. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>